Napoleon The historical figure that's considered one of the greatest military leaders of all time has had a feature made about him which had Mr. Ridley Scott at the wheel. It's one that's been anticipated by many, and I've been looking forward to it for a while now. I was a huge fan of The Last Duel, which was done by Ridley Scott in 2021, and judging by the trailer, it felt like it was going to be similar in style and tone. With Scott being slammed for including moments in the movie which aren't necessarily historically accurate, I thought I'd break down and give my thoughts and opinion on the movie and let you know if it's worth watching, whilst also looking at some of those inaccuracies too. So let's get into it. Here is a review of the Napoleon movie. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. So from the off, this is a very long movie. It's not the longest of the year, as Oppenheimer and Killers of a Flower Moon clock in above it in terms of runtime, but this was a 2 hour 40 feature, and it definitely felt like it. Personally, I'd probably put that down to one of the main issues that I had throughout the entirety of it. One of the main problems that I had was that it felt like it was just so choppy in its approach, and the way that the movie developed over the time, career, and progression of Napoleon's life just felt like it had sprinkles of details rather than the full cake. We'd skip through time periods and battles and the next scene would just be something completely different, and it was something that I found quite jarring at times just purely because it didn't flow that seamlessly. Despite the movie feeling extremely choppy and it not seeming as though there was enough time to tell the story, even though it had a very long runtime, I'd say that something that is quite interesting about the feature is that we're seeing an individual who is involved in wanting to conquer the entirety of a continent not necessarily being perceived as completely evil. So it's a weird one when you're sitting in your chair and watching it. He was responsible for a countless number of deaths with the wars that he carried out, and even though he won the battles that were in front of him, it never truly felt like he'd succeeded. As there was always more to get, and the failure in securing the allies that were there to be made upon victory. So there was a kind of broken narrative that was present with the historical figure, something which it seems as though could well be the case, as his hunger and love for France was what ultimately got the better of him when he was eventually defeated and exiled to St. Helena. I would probably say that the final third of the movie is definitely the best in the entirety of the runtime. You have the Battle of Waterloo, which was really entertaining to watch. You see the sheer love that Napoleon had for France and that he believed that his acts were only ever done to allow the country to prosper, even if it meant that he had to leave. Plus, we saw him inside of Russia where the city was burned to the ground in front of him, which from a visual perspective was gorgeously shot. Something which I think was underplayed in the movie was how pivotal Napoleon tackling Russia in the winter was, and the sheer amount of men that ended up dying because of it. Russia's winter is something that's caught many individuals out over the years when they've tried to invade it, and that was the case with Napoleon too. I found the whole relationship between Napoleon and Josephine to be a bit strange. He loved her unconditionally in real life, and it was something that was kind of replicated in the movie. But also, at the same time, it felt like he was just with her for the sake of being with her. However, one thing that did stay true to the events that happened was that Josephine did have an affair during his campaigns, and the British did intercept a letter that Napoleon wrote about knowing about her affair, and it was in the papers, just like what we saw in the movie. However, her death was something which was portrayed differently. In the movie, we saw that it was upon Napoleon returning to France after being exiled that he learned of her death, but in real life, he found out whilst he was on Elba. The fact that he wrote to her, even after he divorced her, is something that is true with events in real life, and I guess it does show the unconditional love that he had for her. And also, the fact that her name was one of his last words before he died also confirms that too, but I just didn't get that feeling between them in the movie. I mean, I get it, because he was there a lot of the time, but maybe the way that they expressed their love was just the way that it was in those times. The Battle Scenes One of the things that I think stood out in this movie were the battle scenes that took place. It's safe to say that with it being said that Napoleon was involved in over 80 battles and 5 wars, this was something that took up a large part of the runtime, and rightfully so. There were sections within this movie where we saw them put an emphasis on how much of a master Napoleon was at warfare on land, as it was clear that he was able to plan an approach that even when in enemy territory he'd find a way for it to go in the French army's favour, something which was interesting to see unfold and supported how intelligent he was in that field. During the battle scenes, the movie didn't hold back in what it showed us with regards to the death and devastation that occurred. We were right in the midst of it during the fights, and you could sense the claustrophobic nature of being caught up in close-range combat, 
This was mostly due to the shots that the camera was taking. You could sense the almost death sentence that it was being part of the armies at the time. And with us seeing the sheer amount of casualties at the end of the movie, it did a good job at enforcing the devastation and death that was caused. So I think it fully succeeded with the battle scenes that took place. Whether it was on sand, in snow, on grass, amongst flames, or on concrete, each of the battles were impressive to watch, and from a visual perspective, it was really nice to look at. Joaquin Phoenix's performance Joaquin Phoenix's Napoleon was great. To be fair, I knew going into it that he was probably going to be one of the best things about it. I don't know much of Napoleon's personality. However, in the movie, Napoleon kind of comes across as a cold individual that didn't really show much emotion. The only time we got true emotion from him was when he found out that Josephine had an affair and she wasn't there to meet him on his arrival, when he found out that she died, and also when he was losing on the battlefield. I would also say that even when he felt as though he was losing during the Battle of Waterloo, there wasn't much emotion that was expressed. It was almost just like a blank face, so I was led to believe that that was the type of person that he was. Apparently, in real life, the Duke of Wellington said that Napoleon's presence on the battlefield was worth 40,000 soldiers, and I feel the movie got that across quite well in a number of different scenarios. For example, after he returned to France after being exiled to Elba, he managed to convince the army that was stood opposite him to go back onto his side before reclaiming France. And then, also on the battlefield during the Battle of Waterloo, we saw that by him stating to his men that he was alongside them, it was something which spurred them on. So I think the movie did a good job at showing the influence that Napoleon had on the people that he led. It was said that when French troops were dying on the battlefield, they'd chant Viva la Empera, showing that they were committed to Napoleon. I'd probably say that Phoenix was one of the best things about this movie, and his portrayal of Napoleon was one that I bought into completely. Overall review I would say that this movie was okay. It wasn't as good as I thought it would be, and I'm disappointed by that. I love historical pieces, and even though this one was good, I just don't feel as though it got the true story of Napoleon across. The amount of history that it tried to tell ended up consuming the movie in a way that made it feel like it couldn't focus on specific parts, and it could only lightly brush over them. Genuinely, it felt like it was written in a way that a TV show would be, which meant that it would naturally allow for more room, but unfortunately, there wasn't room for it to breathe and to be able to develop. Something which made this movie just feel like it was skipping over things. We were introduced to characters that we saw have importance in the first act to never be heard of again, or even know what their outcome was, which is something that I thought was a shame. Plus, the inconsistency in the accents was something that was confusing at times too. Some would have French, American, English, and it kind of felt like they should have stuck with one at points. The grading was something that felt so modern-day Ridley, which I don't mind, but it felt rather dark at a lot of points, but that might just be the cinema that I went to. So to answer the question on if the movie's worth watching, I'd say it is. I find it hard to say no, unless something is utterly atrocious, but if you're on the fence, it will be on Apple TV eventually, so it might just be worth waiting until then. But if you're dying to see it, then all I'd say is just don't go in with extremely high expectations like I did. Because I just feel that there's too much of this story to tell in a short yet long runtime. I wish it had been a TV show. That would have solved all of the issues. So, there you have it. A review of the Napoleon movie.